G'day guys, uh, Reckless here. Um, this is just a quick video on how to use some of the more intermediate uh, modules and settings for MCC uh, and how to use it in conjunction with the Tactical Map Pack. Uh, now first of all you'll see that we're um, playing today on the Tactical Altus map which is uh, located in um, the FMIS Tactical Map Pack um, and we're out here today at the Altus airfield um, for a nice bit of room and um, to do some stuff. Now uh, basically what we want to do first is open up MCC and log in. Uh, once you're logged in, um, you'll be greeted with a whole bunch of different features. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to go through some basic ones that will just help make your missions a little bit more interesting um, and a little bit more uh, immersive uh, for those of you who don't necessarily want to use Zeus. Um, now, first things first, if you want to entirely use MCC and use the uh, MCC um, forward operating base and their respawn system and stuff like that, um, what you probably first want to do is get rid of the Zeus respawn um that will uh, automatically spawn in your mission so what you want to do is go brushes go delete all and delete the uh zeus respawn uh, and it'll disappear now i'm not going to do that right now because i actually prefer to play with the zeus respawn rather than the mcc respawn uh <clears throat> anyway what we're going to do uh <laughs> excuse me uh we're going to create a zone um first of all uh click on the zone there and create there and then we'll you know zone one uh and you'll see Anything we do right now is uh, involved with Zone 1. Um, now, for a lot of the stuff with MCC, you don't actually have to incorporate into a zone, but it does make things a lot easier. Um, simply by clicking on the red uh, start in the middle, you can move that zone around as well. Uh, but for now, we'll just leave that here. Uh, anyway, what we want to do uh, is spawn in some uh, guinea pigs. Uh, so what we'll do, uh, in case you've got different factions or whatever else there, we're just going to use um, the NATO faction for the most part. Um, once you've got NATO selected, uh, simply go Groups. Now, I'm only doing this um, just to create some uh, guinea pigs. Um, normally, everything I'm going to do now, you would do uh, on yourself and your other human players that you have in the mission. Um, but I don't necessarily want to throw myself around out of aeroplanes and fast roping and stuff like that. So I'm going to do it on the AI. Now, when spawning an AI, you are going to have these behaviors, aggressive, defensive, and fortify. Um, effectively, what these mean is aggressive means that the units will spawn in that zone. And if they see an enemy outside of that zone or there are allies being attacked in other zones they will leave their zone that they spawned in to go to other zones in other words they'll aggressively move around the back the map if you click on defensive they will only stay within that zone they will stay in there no matter where they move or what happens to them they'll always make their way back there uh, and if you click on fortify they'll want to go inside buildings and hunker down and fortify in those buildings so i quite often like to leave them in defensive so then that way i can um, manipulate the size of the zone. Anyway, we'll spawn in one small group of um, a, a small fire team in here. So wherever they are there. Okay, so normally what we would do, everything we're going to do now, you do against human players or for, for human players. Now, a, a habit a lot of MCC players do is they end up using this screen as a crutch throughout the mission. What you actually want to do is when first loading in and spawning a mission is set all this up and then use the commander's tablet, which I will go through in a minute, um, to manipulate all the different things in the game. Now, uh, that, comes with the, uh, that comes with the tactic map pack is you actually have my pre-defined mission settings um, which has your save gear your time acceleration all the rest of that jazz there and effectively how myself and my group like to play with those mission settings so you actually don't really have to change this much um, i'm not going to go into what all these mean um, i'm sure shay uh the creator of it shay and oh, i can't remember the other dude's name i'm real sorry dude um the the creators of mcc have um tutorials on on all the different mission settings uh, and what all the stuff on the left hand side here mean anyway um, so effectively what we want to do is uh, set the start of the mission you want to para drop in 
uh, human players or you want to halo drop them. So MCC has these two fantastic features here. Um, now, you of course can spawn in a helicopter and manually fly the helicopter there and back again, but you know, if you're a Zeus you're, or a Game Master, you're probably going to be actively creating a mission and you don't might not necessarily have enough time to want to do all this. So what you can do is simply click on the unit that you want to manipulate. Uh, now, of course, like I said before, this would probably be your group. You know, if you click on a group here, you'll see everybody who's in the in the group down here. But let's just say this is Alpha 1-1 and this is my group and, and my friends that we're playing with. Uh, what you want to do is you want to select each player. So you simply click on them and then hold control and select each player. I believe you can probably just do shift as well. Yeah, so you can hold shift like you, like you do normally in Windows. Now, uh, say I want to parachute these guys in. Uh, I simply then, once they've got selected, I simply click parachute. Uh, I can either do drop pods. Drop pods is more of a CSAT or a, uh, a OP4 sort of thing you want to do. Parachute's probably more blue 4. Um, so we'll parachute these guys in. Uh, we'll do it relatively over this way. Now, where you click and where you drag it to is the direction the chopper's going to come in. So clicking and dragging this way, the chopper's going to come from the southeast. So I let go. And as you'll see, all the units have now disappeared. The guys have gone, have vanished. And if I go back into the MCC settings, you'll see that there's a chopper incoming. Uh, now, the easiest way you can always tell is see if there's a blue line coming in. Now, um, yeah, so we'll wait for these guys to come halo dropping in. Oh, not halo dropping, parachuting in rather. Now, the same thing goes if you want to halo drop them in. Uh, you simply select um, alpha. In fact, I'll spawn another group. Uh, we'll go a, uh, yeah, we'll go just a general rifle squad in the zone now. So we can see those guys over there. Um, zoom back in again, click on their unit, select each and every one of them, simply click halo drop, and we'll halo drop them uh, here. And so now they'll all disappear. And right now they're spawning way up high in the sky and they're going to be uh, halo dropping in. Now it's going to take some time. Uh, now there seems to be a bit of a bug with the current version of MCC if you're parachuting or para dropping AI players where they won't actually jump out of the helicopter. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why this is, but I assure you if you do it against or do it for human players, they will jump out of the back of the helicopter. The helicopter will just fly over, they'll jump out, and it will be absolutely seamless and work perfectly fine. But for some reason, for the AI, the chopper wants to land and para drop them out at a very, very low height, in which we'll see in a second. Anyway, we'll keep looking up high there. The, uh, the other AI, I am thinking halo dropping from a pretty considerable height. Now again, this is a feature with MCC that you really only want to be doing at the beginning of the mission just to get things kicked off. Um, it quickly starts the game uh, without you having to spawn in a helicopter and uh, and get things going. So as you see, the, uh, our, our view is blocked, but um, basically what happens is once it lands, the AI end up hopping out in a free-falling view. See if the other guys are here yet. Yeah, uh, that's them there. There you go. At a uh, so as you can see there, yeah, they all sort of like pull their shoots on the ground or whatever. It's really bizarre. I don't know. I don't get it. If there's any AA around, they'd be dead for sure. Uh, but the Halo, as you can see, Halo dropping for AI works perfectly fine. Now you can do that with for um, CSAT as well. Enemies, like if you want to do simulate some kind of. Um, uh, reinforcements or something, you can always just spawn them somewhere on the map, uh, select them all and then halo drop them in. So that can be a really cool sort of enemy reinforcement or even um, friendly reinforcement as well if you want. Uh, it works perfectly fine for the AI. The parachuting I would advise probably otherwise. Um, the next thing we probably want to do is look at evacs, um, artillery supply drops and uh, close air support. Now uh, again, what I said before, a lot of the stuff people want to use as a crutch inside the game and keep using this interface. But what you really want to do is set a lot of this stuff up pre-game and then use your commander's tablet to control and manipulate them. So to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you want to go into your MCC keys. And what you're looking for is Commander's Console. Now, you probably won't have the debug console up uh, in the game. But anyway, what you want to do is look for your Commander's Console. Um, so then what you want to do is press P 
and bring up this page here for the MCC sandbox and you want to take the commander. Out. So now that you're commander, you basically are leading the field um, and you can manipulate all kinds of different MCC features. Um, now then what you want to do is bring up your MCC tablet and it's broken down into a whole bunch of different uh, settings. Uh, so you've got your main menu, which is this one here, which controls close air support, airdrops and evacs. Um, you've got UAV control, uh, an AC-130 control, which is really overpowered if you just want to wreck your enemies, um, and an artillery interface, which is probably one of the coolest features of MCC, uh, and construction, which I'm not too sure how to use. Uh, anyway, so what we want to do now is um, use, uh, use an evac chopper uh, and uh, simulate being uh, inserted into an area using fast roping. So you want to bring, open up your uh, MCC again. Uh, again, this is what you'd probably want to do at the start of the mission and create some form of evac. Now, any of this stuff is going to spawn depending on what faction you have selected up the top here. So we're today, well, right now, we're, doing, we're using NATO. Again, like I said before. So select helicopters. We'll use a Chinook um, as a... Uh, as the evac. And... As a general rule, um, I have the evac spawned off the battlefield somewhere, or if you're at the base or something like that, you can spawn here somewhere. But anyway, uh, we will we'll spawn this chopper at the end of the airfield uh, to simulate it being somewhere else on the map. Now you'll see it spawn. Now none of this stuff matters. The insertion, any of this stuff here doesn't matter. Um, it's now been spawned on the map and it's been given to the commander. So what you want to do is bring up your commander console. So say we finish the mission, um, you know, we've been halo dropped in, and we've completed our first objective and we want to get picked up, taken somewhere else, and we want to uh, fast rope at that location because it's too hot or whatever else have you there. So once you bring up your commander's console, you want to look for evac management and you want to select what um, what form of evac. Now, it doesn't have to be a chopper. It can be a vehicle or all kinds of different stuff, but by far, choppers are the easiest way to use because you are dealing with the Armour 3 AI at the end of the day. Now what you want to do is insertion. What we want to do is we want to get picked up first of all. So we'll just do free landing and lean, leave the engine running. Uh, the flight height, depending on how dangerous the area is or how far it is, select that. But we'll leave it at 50 for now to make it as quickly as possible. We'll call the evac for just one location. Just makes it easy. You can use three location, but I find it easier just to use one. I apologize, apologize if I'm talking too quickly. Um, there's just a lot to get through and I don't really want to make an hour long video on how to use MCC. Anyway, after you've selected a uh, evac location, a number one will appear on your, um, on your uh, commander's tablet. Um, as you can hear off in the distance, uh, the chopper is starting up. But uh, let's just say you, it's way, 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 and you want to double check. You can always just go back to your command and console really quickly uh, and just check for the blue line to make sure the chopper's coming. Well, that wasn't the command and console, that was the uh, game master's console. Anyway, so the chopper's coming in. Uh, we've just finished uh, assaulting and clearing out the Altus airbase. Uh, everyone's walking around. Now we're going to head to some other location and, um, and fast rope in. So what we want to do is wait for this chopper to land. Now obviously using your commander's tablet when doing it, you can get them to do a whole bunch of different things, you know, halo casting over water, smoke signal. Um, that will mean you will have to drop a smoke signal and then it will land, you know, wherever the smoke is, etc. and stuff like that, which is even more immersive. Not too sure why he's going over there. I guess he's looking for the most safe, the, the safest place to land. Because uh, for whatever reason, I guess those poles are too close to his blades. So let's hope he lands over here. So the AI won't just necessarily land exactly where you want them to land. They'll land where they can land the safest. Um, because after all, it is Armour 3 AI. And the last thing you need is um, them running into buildings or trees or whatever else have you and quite often you might actually set the evac up at a reasonably far distance away from you for you to run to that uh, evac because uh, where you are might be a little bit too hot anyway we go and jump in the back of the chopper here get in the back of it all right so now we want to fast rope at our next location so i'm going to completely I could pretty much get rid of all the sound for this. 
Um, anyway, so we'll bring up our Commander's Tablet, we're in the chopper, ready to go. So what we want to do is we want to go to the other end of the airfield, and we want to fast rope out of it. So, insertion, we want to fast rope. Uh, we'll, do, we'll go 100 meters in the sky uh, to there, and then we click call evac, and we go there. So now the chopper should pick up. And it will take us to our location. Now depending on the type of terrain, hills, enemies around and stuff like that, you may want the, to fly the chopper higher. Uh, if it's just a short distance, maybe fly it lower. Um, you know, a whole bunch of different things as a commander. So you need to organize that um, on the battlefield prior to uh, actually um, calling in the evac. Uh, or, uh, or or an issue in the evac. Okay, so once the chopper is getting ready to fast rope, the, the back door will open up automatically. Um, now you don't have to use a Chinook for this. You can use a little bird or, or any plane that or any helicopter rather that supports fast roping. Uh, you can use RHS ones. You can use different mods. Doesn't matter which one there. So once it's ready, you'll see down the bottom left it's saying get into position. We're getting ready to fast rope. The ropes come out, and in great armor three style the beautiful animation of the fast roping comes out and we fast rope to our location. Um, once all players have fast rope, the chopper will uh, return to the location that it spawned at, I believe. It should automatically go back to where it spawned. Yeah, which I think is what's happening now. Perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, um, we'll head back to the, uh, the terminal. Uh, so in case you didn't know, you can always click on your name, uh, click on your squad, whatever squad it is, click on uh, player, again, hold control, select what players you want to manipulate, uh, and then click teleport, and then we'll teleport back to the uh, back to this location here. Um, now the next thing we're going to do is uh, calling in reinforcements, uh, and using reinforcements to come in at a, with a variety of different uh, methods. So again, say this is an AO, it's hot, we've, we've got the uh, native forces over here and we've got some CSAT forces over there fighting us um, and, you know, we use uh, Task Force Radio and Task Force Radio to, to call on some um, uh, reinforcements via the radio or whatever have you, you just want to bring in some reinforcements. Um, go back into your MCC settings um, and then you want to go spawn uh, and then so say again, we want to select what zone we want to manipulate so zone one again this is the zone that we want to deal with um now we want to spawn in nato reinforcements you want to then go groups and then you go branch and then you would go to go down to reinforcement um from here you can then uh select how you want them to come in so you can either do a para drop which is what we saw before probably works exactly the same um as the feature that we looked before uh drop off which where the chopper would just literally land uh drop them that all hop out the back of it and then fly away fast rope which is what we're going to do and motorized uh which i'm guessing they're going to drop off um some vehicles uh so what we'll do is we'll do a medium um fast rope crew uh, and then what we want to do is we want to spawn them in a zone so that way it tells the server where the units are to go and then we want to click where we want the reinforcements to come in so we'll drop them about here somewhere and then uh, very shortly afterwards uh, we should see uh, the reinforcements spawn in now unfortunately you can't select what direction they coming from unless I was supposed to click and drag I'm not too sure you can try that yourself um, so you can uh, click and drag so wherever you start to and end they're going to come from that direction like we saw before anyway these um, fast roping uh, allies are coming in now we can obviously do that as well with the enemy so say we want to spawn in some uh, we'll go CSAT why not Go see set uh, reinforcements. Always wait for the screen to blink like that, and then that way now it's using CSAT. We'll just double check and watch this animation real quick. So you'll see that the chopper is floating around. The uh, reinforcements are getting ready, dropping their fast rope, and in great armor three style, they're fast roping out. 
like some kind of 1920s cartoon. But hey, it works at least, you know. At least you can simulate. It's, it's a hell of a lot better than using Zeus to to spawn in enemies far away and making them run in or or uh, or really whatever. And I think they automatically go to Gaia. No, they don't. No, they don't automatically move to Gaia. So, at least they do. They do automatically go to Gaia and then they'll automatically make their way to whatever zone you want them to spawn, um, actively spawn in. So, um, you can sleep really wherever you want. And they'll make their way here. So, as you can see, our reinforcements are coming in. So, what we'll do is we will uh, spawn in some CSAT. Uh, we'll go units, again, groups, infantry, uh, reinforcements. Uh, this time we'll go... Uh, we'll go a large airborne group, fast rope. Um, so we're going to make them attack zone one. That's the zone there. And we'll make them come from, uh, we'll make them go here. Let's have a look. I'm not too sure if that worked. Let's have a look. So, okay. So clicking and dragging doesn't work. You simply click where you want them to land. So as you can see, here comes some uh, CSAT units. Um, now due to the relatively reasonable size of our NATO troops here. I wouldn't expect that chopper to actually successfully uh, halo, um, fast rope them. But again, it's Armour 3 AI. Oh, well, it is, is Gaia, I suppose. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, here they come. In the nifty CSAT chopper. Now these are things you can do mid-game and in-game as the Game Master. Um, we'll get into a few more settings in a minute that you want to set up prior and then use your commander console throughout the game, like the evac setting, you know what I mean? You don't want to be constantly chopping in evacs and, and different things and stuff like that. Um, I'm like so tempted to shoot at these guys, but we'll wait for them to land. I might go into ghost mode so I don't get shot. And so, as you can see, all the CSAT guys are fast roping in. Which is a really cool feature. It's so much better than, like, spawning in, you know, uh, enemy troops all the time with Zeus. You know, or even spawning them in the sky and make them artificially parachute out of the sky and stuff like that. But So the reason I'm guessing why they're so freaking terrible is I probably got the AI aiming skill pretty low. I'll put them up to veteran just so they can kill each other off real quick. Oh damn CSAT, they're so tough. Anyway, for purposes of the video, I'll just quickly delete them and get rid of them anyway. So you can see all the cool guy stuff which is happening right now as well. The guy is like setting up different strategies and things like that for them. Um, I'm going to use Zeus because I can't be bothered. Actually, no, I won't. I won't. Spawn over here. Where's Zeus? I'll just get rid of him like this. There you go. I do prefer to use a, sort of a mixture of MCC and Zeus um, and things like that. So in case you're wondering with that cloud, that's um, Blast Core Phoenix 2. Uh, all right, so the next thing is, so now that we've done reinforcements via fast rope, reinforcements by the enemy, we're going to take a look at a few more of these different features here from artillery, um, supply drops, close air support um, as well. Uh, and you can use the AC-130 as well, but that thing is so overpowered. Um, it really just takes a lot of the fun out of the mission, uh, unless you really want to use it. So, uh, again, this is something you want to set up prior to the mission. So, what we're going to do is we'll say to the, um, the commander, the guy whoever's running the mission or whatever there, um, you'll have a basic ammo drop at some stage. Uh, now, of course, I almost stuffed up then you need to make sure you change your faction back to whatever faction you're playing is it more works better for just think of blue four op four and independent so if you're as you can see i'm playing as the rhs um marine uh sorry army um but even if i spawn in nato stuff i can still use it and use it as the commander's tablet it's more to do with the actual size than the specific faction uh but anyway so before the mission you'll say okay you've got one uh ammo drop uh, of basic ammo and then you can uh, add it down here to the current airdrop and you go add to console and you'll see it's been added to the player's console and you have one uh, one vehicle 
we'll say one vehicle here. Uh, Hunter's always a good one. I went right past them, didn't I? Uh, there we go. This one here. Uh, so you want to clear this again. If you want to make additional supply drops, so anything I add into here now, so as you can see here now, you'll see that in this airdrop, there's two. So what you want to do is you want to hit clear if you want to make a separate airdrop. So you're going to have the option for two separate airdrops for the player. So you then want to add the vehicle here and then add to console. So now we've added, now, so now we've got an ammo drop and we've got a uh, HMG ATV vehicle. Um, that's going to have two separate airdrops. Uh, additionally as well, we're gonna set up some artillery. So we're gonna say as well, um, we'll give you some HE 82 millimeter rounds. These are basically just general mortars. Um, this doesn't really matter right now, precise and on target or whatever, that doesn't really do anything. You just wanna make sure you tell them whatever number of shells they get given. So we'll give them 10 shells for now um, and we'll add it to the MCC console. So now it's been added to the MCC console, uh, and again, CAS. So uh, total option, um, but we'll go CAS and we'll give him uh, one bombing run. We'll add that to the console, um, and we'll give one rockets run, which I don't know will work anyway. So whatever vehicle you're sitting in here, you have to make sure that the type of support is suitable to that vehicle. So I, for example, um, a uh, a Chinook that has only Gatling guns, there's no point giving it a bombing run because all that Chinook's going to do is fly over the battlefield and do nothing. So we've basically given a uh, a Thunderbolt, uh, A10 uh, Thunderbolt, uh, given it two orders. So now we've got a close air support, a supply drop, and some artillery. And I'll show you how to use these. Now, a lot of people just use this as a crutch, just call them from here and, and just use it through this, but... You really want to remove yourself away from this template once you're in the mission and once you're playing. You want to set all this stuff up prior to the game, go off and do your mission and then use the commander's tablet. I've, I've said this three times now, but again, it's not something you really want to use a lot unless you're spawning in reinforcements and, and things like that. Uh, now, of course, you can use triggers and a whole bunch of different stuff, but that's more advanced sort of stuff rather than intermediate Um MCC started all that, uh, the artillery, the supply drop, and the close air support to your commander's console. To use any of those uh, features, what you want to do is reopen your commander's console. Now, of course, you want to double check to make sure that you are commander uh, by pressing P and opening up this uh, MCC sandbox thing. Open up your commander's console. Now, again, everything you can see here is all populated now. So the first thing we're going to work on is uh, the close air support. So we'll work top to bottom. Um, basically, we've got uh, these two plane drops on standby, on call, right? So say at the end of the airfield over here, we've got uh, some uh, CSAT troops that we want to destroy or blow up. Basically, we select which one we want. Unfortunately, it doesn't say what kind. Oh, yes, it does. Rockets or bombing. So we'll do a bombing run, first of all. Click close air support, then simply click and drag, just like you did before. So the plane is gonna come from the northeast and head towards the southwest. We let go, air support coming. Now the shorter it is or the longer you make it, the more bombs he's gonna drop. But to double check, go back on your, command, on your MCC console and you can see here comes the jet. Wait for the jet to come. So here it comes now. So he's dropping quite a few. He's raining down some hell there. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, keep in mind they are American pilots. So their accuracy for dropping bombs, it's a pretty good chance it's going to land on your own troops. So just like the Vietnam War, you're probably going to end up killing just as many of your own players as you do the enemy. Um, but all puns aside, um, we'll, we'll bring up the, we'll bring it up again. Uh, we'll go another rocket run. Uh, we'll drag it from the opposite side this time, southwest to uh, northeast, and uh, let that go again. Now this one was a gunning run, I believe. Uh, it's gone now, so I'm not entirely sure if the A-10 
Warthog, or Thunderbolt rather, uh, actually has guns, which I think it does. I'm not really a pilot, I'm, I'm generally more of a grunt. So as you can see, here comes the two jets. One, I think, drops uh, anti-air. Oh yeah, there you go. So that's pretty cool. Not as effective as a bombing run, but if you don't want to make the, your life super easy for the uh, players, you can always put that in. So that's very, very easy. So again, this is a something you'd set up at the start of the mission, and then you give the commander to do whatever he wants throughout the mission. Um, next one is the supply drops. So as you can see here, we've got two uh, airdrops available. Uh, we're going to call on the airdrop for the, just this one here. Now, of course, you can add a whole bunch of them to it anyway, but we'll call on the airdrop, and we're going to drop it here in the base. Uh, say this way here, this is the ammo, drag and drop again, and frankly who knows where it's going to come from, well actually it'll come from the, uh, yeah, the east, but who knows where it will actually land, it will all largely depend on what the weather is like. Let's see how much wind we got today, eh, it's relatively windy, it's not too bad. So again, this makes things a whole lot better, man. You can you can always spawn in um, boxes or ammo trucks and things like that via Zeus and just pop it into existence. Or you can use something like MCC that will actually bring in a far more realistic um, gaming experience for your users. Now, of course, something like a supply drop as well, I believe it does work perfectly fine if you if you are doing a full-time Zeus, if you're playing a full-time Game Master, uh, you actually want to do something a little bit more. You can add it to console, call it in. We'll add this in, see if the hammer comes in. Drop it on the runway. You know, you can do that as a full-time Zeus as well, so that's pretty cool as well. Very, very easily done. Anyway... So here comes the chopper with our ammo supply. And then just to reiterate what we did before, we go back to our commander's tablet, and then we want to bring in an ATV, the HMG, because say we crashed our old one or whatever, call on the airdrop, click and drag what direction you want it to come from. For super realism, super immersion, do it, drag from your air, from the base that you came from to where you're going. So say we came from up here, <laughs> always drag it from northeast to southwest, you know, that's for super realism, otherwise you can make it come from whatever direction you want. Anyway, so you'll see a whole bunch of different supply drops coming around. Uh, that would be our um, ammo box there. There's a vehicle, I'm, I must have screwed the vehicle one up. There's the, oh no, so these are the, uh, Yeah, right, so there's our there's the vehicle drop we called from the commander's console. There's the vehicle drop we called from the MCC uh, gaming master console. And there's the ammo box that we called in there. Now, of course, as you can see, it looks like the wind is blowing in that direction. So that'd be the west. So you can sort of see, I guess, they're all floating slightly to the west, which is pretty cool. And when they land... Um, they'll have smoke pouring off them as well. Okay, so lastly, um, I'll touch on the artillery. Now, the artillery is probably one of the coolest, if not the coolest feature of MCC. Uh, I quite like it. Um, you know, a lot of game masters will just call an artillery uh, through here. You know, just select what kind of bomb they want or whatever, and then they'll just bomb the shit out of the area. If you want to do a far more realistic way, um, that is unless you're actually going to be talking back and forth to um, a commander uh, who's playing a full-time Zeus. Um, but what you can do is bring up your commander's tablet, uh, and then what you want to do is you want to move to your forward observer artillery interface, which is Steel Rain, a pretty badass room, and you'll be given with this uh, template here. Now, at first distance, this is looks like Chinese, and it pretty much is. It's uh, very, very difficult to understand at first glance. Um, just understand this is where you are on the map, uh, which makes perfect sense. So the first thing you want to do is copy your position, and that will give you X-ray and Yankee uh, coordinates. And then you want to figure out where you want to bomb. So say we want to bomb uh, 
say we want to bomb that air tower over there. Now I'm not going to say I'm perfect to this, but we'll go on the map. Where is it? That would be it there, wouldn't it? That's the that's the control tower there. Yeah, that's the control tower there. All right. So what we want to do is bring up our uh, MCC template, and uh, we want to. Go back to Steel Rain. And then we want to click copy our position again. Then we're going to go ruler. And we want to, from our location, as close as possible to our location, all the way to where we want to bomb. All right? So that's around about there. All right? Then that will be giving us our direction and our distance. So we want to type in direction is 51. Distance is 1, 1. One eight, and then from there we want to go over here, and we want to select cannon one, and we want to bomb it with say six out of the ten shells that we have, and we want to go tight. Precise is pretty bang on. Tight is pretty tight. Um, I'm going to go tight just because I'm not too sure how accurate I was with that drawing of the line, and we want to go air yeah, four effect, uh, and then we want to go. Um, we don't want to have any delays. We want to, don't want to have any um, terrain elevation distance. We just want to hit confirm. So basically, it will then give up the directions, all the rest of that jazz there, and then we want to hit execute. Still rain. This is Raptor. Adjust fire. Estimated over. Raptor, this is still rain. Adjust fire. Estimated out. Ten digit grid. November uniform. Six seven three one two. Zero nine five seven one over. Ten digit grid, November uniform, six seven three one two, zero nine er five seven one out. Request flash over. Request flash out. Shot over. Shot out. See how accurate I was, eh? Or how accurate they are. Alright, so it landed off in the distance probably because of my... The selection I probably should have done precise, perhaps, rather than tight. In fact, if we go back on the MCC console here, and I go artillery, go precise, and you see how big the circle is, so it is actually pretty big. Maybe I probably should have done on target. And even then, it's still pretty, still pretty loose anyway, so um, that's just the nature of artillery. Now, another cool feature as well, um, say you want to play... Uh, Say a night mission, so we'll quickly make it night time. And oh, uh, I don't need a night vision. Um, now, say you are playing with night vision, which I guess I'm not. I don't know why I didn't spawn with night vision, but anyway, oh, there it is there in my, in my gear. Uh, so, yeah, and, and you running with night vision? Say you want to pretend that the uh, enemy uh, don't have night vision, which they probably won't by default. Um, but say you don't, the enemy don't have night vision. What you can do is you can say that the enemy are going to uh, send in a whole bunch of um, flares to light up the sky uh, to help out the enemies. And this is really cool for night missions. So what you can do is you can set it to say, uh, I always go the maximum of 50, and then put a delay of 20 seconds. And you can go call. Go tight. Go wide. All right. So you want to call in twenty seconds of red flares. And then basically, what's happening is the AI are 
sending an artillery of flares to help out uh, the enemy to see to see us. So every 20 seconds for the next 50, those flares are going to keep spawning up there, which is really cool. Like in a city like Fallujah or somewhere where there's a lot of buildings and stuff like that, this is a really fantastic feature to light up the sky. So you're going to see these flares are just going to keep coming in one after the other for, 20, for the next 50 of them every 20 seconds, which is really badass. Really cool feature. Uh, now I'm using Blast Core Phoenix 2, so it appears... Oh, uh, the, the creator that's created Blast Core Phoenix 2 hasn't really um, worked on the flares that well. Anyway, so you get the idea uh, using that. Um, other than that, there are a whole bunch of other features. I'd avoid the convoy submission it's part of the module it's a little bit finicky to use um but you do basically get the idea of how to use close air support supply drops evacs uh ieds i'm sure you know how to use um and everything else so that's a way of just using mcc instead of zeus to create a little bit more immersive uh and interesting tactical gameplay rather than just spawning and stuff and trying to control it uh and things like that you know, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, or any requests of anything with MCC you'd like to see or how things are used, put it in the description, uh, in the comments below. Um, please like the video if you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Uh, if you have any, um, yeah, recommendations on other tutorials or anything like that that you'd like to see how to use more um, in depth uh, with Armour 3, um, please let me know. Other than that, thanks very much and see you guys on the battlefield.